Is it one? No, it's two. Sad by sad, I don't have no clue. I'm talking the hardest, shedding out gigs. Cappy is the name takes out of the blue. CM is the one with sense. Hence, you can't just sit on the fence. Come true the foolishness, just look at the gaffer and sit on the bench. When you talk about wins, we got that. Time to settle this thing with a chop back. Aim top corner, roll top scorers. We spread the play that floor up. Out in the field, United twins are the next of kings. Question debate is a show that brings in a one feet one trying to see who wins. And UFC. <laughs> Arsenal 3, Manchester United 1 And before I get into delving deep into this game First and foremost, I just want to say Thank you to everybody who shows some support on Cappy's Watch Along You know what it is, we're back And it's just it just feels great to be back making content Whether it's Cappy with his Watch Along United Twins with the both of us being back to, to gaming streams, doing NBA streams, which are going to be coming soon. It's just back, it's great to be back making content, doing editing and all of that good stuff. So I appreciate everybody who went over to that watch along. I'm sure Cappy himself, he's going to say in his part, he appreciates it. So big up to everybody. And also, if you don't know about it, get to know streams, watch alongs, all that kind of stuff over on Twitch at CM22ENT. So make sure you drop a follow. And, and also get at all of the socials, especially on Twitter, when we do announce when we go live and all of that good stuff. But yeah, you know, Cappy was watching the game. I was watching the game elsewhere. And you know what? It was a, a very weird game because, oh, they, they, they often talk about fine margins and stuff like that. It was crazy. We t <laughs> I remember back in the days, well, not back in the days, it's actually a few months ago. We were talking about winning games in individual moments, and that's all we can do. Now, we lose games in individual moments. Trust me better. So it's almost like we've taken a another turn for the worst as a team. Yeah, we've been talking about these players. It seems like they're already on holiday. They've down tools. It seems like Ralph Ragnick has down tools because the way he's talking, the way he looks on the touchline, he looks like he doesn't give a crap, to be honest. And the same with the players. So it's almost like, why should we as fans care for the rest of the season when the players aren't giving the output that they should be? We had a game against Liverpool last game, disgraceful output. And today, of course it was a little better. Arsenal weren't great, Manchester United weren't great, but guess what? Arsenal were clinical with their chances and they punished us. Um, first goal, diabolical defending, comical defending, comedy FC defending. I mean, the cross comes in. Ran misses his header. Tellez miss kick. Comical already. Saka tries to bend it past De Gea's. De Gea aiming for the left-hand corner. De Gea parries it out. The low drops to sleep and Tavares just runs past him. Easy tapping. First goal, terrible. Second goal with the penalty. Oh man, what can you do? The goal is offside, which Andy Nketiah scores. And then they dial it back on VAR to look at Tellez's challenge. Even worse game for him because now he commits a penalty. Saka dispatches. Um, the Cristiano Ronaldo goal, fantastic cross by Matic. It was that moment of brilliance that we're speaking about, isn't it? We're back in the game. Cristiano Ronaldo gets his 100th Premier League goal. Congratulations to you, sir. And then the 70th minute game. Yeah, you know, you can speak about being better. But you're, you're only as good as the goals you score. In football, it's like basketball. You're only good as the baskets you get. In football, you're only as good as the goals you score and the games that you win. And if you're not able to score goals, you're not going to win games. Today, Arsenal scored three and we scored one, which means what? We lose. We lose the game. So, technically, we're, we're crap because we didn't win. So, yeah, that Xhaka goal. No closing down. You let a man who... As a history of scoring from distance, strike the ball, things like that are going to happen. It's a lack of IQ. It's a lack of knowing the player's identity on the pitch. Those are things that come with the IQ. If you know that Granite Jack is a guy who likes to hit things and can score long-range goals, you close him down. I don't care what you do, whether you crash him down, 
get a foul. Whatever you do, you do not make him take that shot. And the defenders backed up and backed up as they usually do. Boom, bow. It's in the back of the net. So where do we go from here yet again? Well, as, as you will notice, as the season concludes, we won't, me and Cappy won't have much to say because it's like, what else do we need to say? We know what's wrong with this club. We know what needs to be done at this club, but will it be done? Who knows? Of course, we're seeing positive signs. I welcome Eric Ten Hag, of course. Um, the two scouts that have been here for a few years. Uh, one that came with Louis Van Gaal and then Jim Lawler, who was the one who's been here for quite a long time. They're gone and they'll be looking to get in some new scouts now with a fresher output on things and a more modern method of scouting players in general to fit this team, which is going to be managed for um by Eric Ten Hag for the next few years. So it's going to be integral that we scout the correct players to fit with his philosophy. So will all those things work out? We will see in due time. But now we have to keep on speaking out to the Glazers, to the owners, to the board members to make sure that they are they stay on job and they hear what the fans are thinking constantly. I always speak about doing it in numbers. You know what I mean? Sound in numbers is more guaranteed to be, it's more likely to be heard rather than just one person speaking. Never be the minority, be the majority. You know what I mean? And and that doesn't stand for everything, but in this sense, it works. Never be the minority speaking, be the majority when it comes to speaking to the Glazers and letting them know what should be right and letting them know that they are failing this football club. And I will say that time and time again. Happy will say that time and time again because it's only the truth. And we come from a place where we love this football club to the death of us. Previous generations have gone down loving this football club. So why can't we do the same? They walked so we can run. So we need to evolve even more and make sure that we're holding this club accountable for every single mistake they make. Because fans are wiser than you think. A lot wiser than you think. So it's time for us to use that intelligence and speak up and be brave and be proud about it. Simple as that. Yo, Cappy, where the? You know the thing that was frustrating about that CM? Big up everybody, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. The thing that was frustrating about that game mm. was the fact that we could have got better, but in the grand scheme of things, we didn't deserve nothing. New. Now, see, I could, I could go on and speak about all the mistakes just like CM did, but I'm not going to get into that. Because in the end of the day, we have to remember something. And you know what? I'm going to mention this. Ralph Ragnick's presser today was very, very interesting because CM speaks about him sounding like he's down tall. It's very, very interesting. And I want to know in the comment section below, what, what side do you stand on? Because I kind of saw what Ralph Ragnick said in terms of the club, what the club needs to do in terms of change and how easy it can be if you have the people cooperating up there. Uh, I retweeted it on Twitter and made my own comment and stuff like that. I took over his account and said what I said. But yeah, he basically said that how easy it is. And he said it in the presser. He said, you don't need glasses to see what you need to do. So someone that I was speaking to on Twitter was basically saying, you know, in a, in a corporate place, in a business, when you are publicly you know, kind of almost criticizing your, your bosses and stuff like that, they don't take to that well. And maybe, you know, do you agree with that? Or do you think uh, being a football club, it's a different situation and it doesn't really matter? Do, do you believe that? Or do you think the energy should be kept the same? Keep everything in-house, speak to your bosses that way. Or do you go to the press like we do with the managers and stuff like that and the air out dirty laundry. It's not really dirty laundry in the end of the day because it's, it's the worst kept secret. Manchester United fans have been speaking about what needs to happen in terms of structural changes within the club, bringing in the best in quality, scouts, 
technical directors, directors of football, all of that good stuff, the people who keep what goes on on the football pitch ticking so that all Ten Hag needs to do and his coaching stuff is coach the team and make sure everybody's well in terms of man management, mental health, mental clarity, all of that good stuff. You need to have a structure above the coaches and the managers to make sure that everything on the football pitch and off of it is ticking. That is your job as an owner to make sure mm -hmm. that you understand how to structurally put together a football club. And right now, the Glazers have proved to us that they do not know how to do that. Exactly. By employing inexperienced members who are not qualified for those job roles. Darren Fletcher, technical director, he's more on the pitch most of the time. What the hell is going on? He looks like a coach. What is he really doing? Ralph Ragnick has said he doesn't know what his role is. That says it all. And this guy's supposed to be involved in the process of employing a new manager. Obviously, Ten Hag's here. Fantastic. Great. But you, you leave that in the hands of him. John Murtaugh is there. and He's got praise from some, which is give or take. I'm not giving praise to anybody until there's a consistent amount of change, a consistent amount of achievements being made. There are no achievements. Right now, we're not finishing in the Champions League spot. We're heading straight back to the Europa League. So there's nothing to celebrate about and there's nothing to, to, to give praise for. There's no to give thanks and prayers. None of that. So what are we doing here? We can't be just dashing out praise. This is why we got here in the first place. We need to make sure that we stay strict. We don't fall for no PR spin. We don't get giddy. As Nurendin says, big up United Rule Therapy, go and subscribe. But we can't be, you know, getting mad over the littlest of things. Mm -hmm. Because in the end of the day, it's been almost 10 years since the Alex Ferguson has left. And this club has never been the same since him and David Gill departed. Why is that? Because this club, the owners have failed time and time again under how many managers now? David Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Rangnick, even though he's a kind of interimmy, and now Ten Hag. They have failed to put together a complementary structure to make sure that everything that happens on the pitch is winning. Contending for the title, Champions League titles, winning trophies, it's all been a whole heap of con inconsistency, sorry. A whole heap of inconsistency. And is that good enough? No. Is sacking a, a couple scouts good enough? Is employing in-house guys and, and, you know, former players of the club good enough to give praise? No. We need a long, a long line of consistent changes that lead to winning situations an improvement in this club's culture and, of course, bringing in players into that team that complement the manager's philosophy and the club's philosophy. That is what we should be praising people for. And until that's done, it's not going to be here for another year, two or three. So I will wait to praise until I see what this club and what us fans have been calling for ever since Ole got sacked, ever since... Mourinho got sacked, Van Gaal got sacked. I will praise when I see that everything from what's on the pitch to what above it is ticking and in a healthy manner. That is what I will praise. End of story. But listen, people, if you've liked this episode, please be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to CM22 ENT if you're new. And in the comment section below, tell me what you thought of the game. Tell us what you thought of the game. And also, what do you think Manchester United need to do to get back to the top? What do they, what do the club as a whole need to do in order to make sure that Eric Ten Hag will be a success at Manchester United? Let us know in the comment section below. We'll be there reading and responding. Until the next time though, We'll see you lot soon. Uh... You smash it again, boys. Cut it, cut it, cut it. Finish.
Make sure you subscribe, like this video, everything free, no need for a criminal, mind control, all subliminal, Twitter, TikTok, Insta, digital, join this crew, follow my Twitch and I might rape you, if you pass through ends in this my gang, bust down doors or phase right through.